what's up? What's going on? <laughs> what's up, Mel? What's up, Joe? What's up, Mel? What's up, Brandy? <laughs> hey, uh, how y'all weekend been? My weekend was great. Had a really good weekend, really good week, very productive, um, exciting. Got to see my peoples in the Bronx. Got to see my son graduate. Class of 2020. So, yes, big accomplish, um, accomplishments this weekend and lots of turning up, lots of drinking and laughing and really enjoying my time. So I'm happy. How about you guys? Mel, I'll let you go first. What did I do this weekend? I didn't. I think I just caught up on some assignments for school, clean the house, uh, just preparing for the week. Nothing. I didn't do any turning up, like be over here. Mm, you know, I gotta turn up, girl. Right. I got to turn up. I was a little boring today, and That's yesterday. All right. That's all right. I was relaxing, so it was good. What about That's you? That's not girl? relaxing, Joe. I mean, my well, that schoolwork and crap. <laughs> She had the cerebral turn up. She was in the books. <laughs> well, I wasn't moving my body around and mm-hmm. running crazy. That's mm-hmm. what I meant. Okay. Always mm-hmm. got to use the brain. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Joe? Uh, my weekend was interesting. I actually went on a hiking trail and I had an experience. Ooh. What kind of experience you had at the top of that trail? It was interesting because it was a point in the trail where I kind of got lost and I saw another female person. It was she was Asian. Mm-hmm. A female person. <laughs> when did they make those? <laughs> so, uh, so I'm trying to come where she's going, and she's trying to come up where I'm going. And she looks at me and she cuts, turns right back around and hauls ass. She's gone. She thinks I'm like a rapist in the in the woods or something. Like she disappears. So I'm walking. I'm like, okay, cool. I, I think this is the way out. Mm-hmm. And she is, I'm looking for her and she is gone. Like she literally ran until she ended up at a dead end and she had to come back my way. And then I stepped out her way, like, I right, can't go. And um, that was very interesting. But the trail was kind of fun, you know what I'm saying? I, I actually mm-hmm. realized that I like hiking now. So that's what's okay, up. That's cool. Was um, this a date? Hmm? Was this a date? You know, I got to be all in the business. I just, <laughs> just, like, just going on the trail. Just a random trail? By yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Did so you have I, gray sweatpants on? You have gray sweatpants on? <laughs> That's <laughs> why that lady ran. She saw, those gray, <laughs> she saw those gray sweatpants. She got nervous, y'all. Hey, I, hey, I have black sweatpants. Oh, okay. 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 Well, but that's I, good. It sounds like both of you guys had a very good weekend. We Event. did. High five, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, before we get into today's topic, we actually have a special guest um, that's going to be joining us soon. Uh, okay. Lorraine Kamisha. She's going to be joining the podcast in uh, a few moments. But um, do you guys want to talk about like I feel like last the last podcast we did because you know yeah. off last week because of Father's Day. How was your Father's Day, Joe? Yeah, happy Father's Day again. Mm-hmm. And how was your Father's Day? Father's Day was cool. It was just like any other day. It was just relaxed. My um my son, he was over, he was the only one with me uh that weekend and pretty much he was just like he woke up the next morning and he was like no, I, I really ain't got no money to get you anything, and but I'm a, I'm gonna clean the house. I was like, That's right. nice. So you know, he went out the way. I was like, you know, I wouldn't want to. I mean, that. so you know, so he just did his thing. And, you know, he washed dishes and all that. I was like, okay, look at you, boy. So you know, he was doing it, doing his thing. But it was pretty, like I said, it was pretty cool. Just laid back, quiet, like any other day. You know, I you know I don't be expecting nothing. Probably to go down. You know what I'm saying? But it was cool. so. But okay, I, that's. That's definitely a plus, the help yeah. around the house. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. So, yeah, like I said, it was just cool. And, you know, definitely loving all the Father's Day texts and calls. So, that was also awesome. Okay. Uh, what about um, June 16th? What did you guys do to celebrate uh, June 16th? Hey, Selinda. Hey, Selinda. Um, <laughs> 
Well, I worked for June. <laughs> I ain't shit. I was at work for Juneteenth. Yes. Hey, Daphne. I was singing, hey, Daphne. I was singing Negro spirituals um, <laughs> the whole way through. Um, That's funny because it was on a Friday and I was not was, off. I wasn't off either. Yeah, so, I was. That, that, you know, that, um, that doesn't apply yet till next year. <laughs> right. And it also doesn't apply to all businesses. It's up yeah. to the um, company's discretion to tech, um, to celebrate it as a holiday. So it's going to probably be like a floating holiday, like Martin Luther King Day and other holidays. Right. Um, and I heard it's um, by state as well. So not every state is recognizing it. But I'm going to take it off every year. I feel like it should be just as important as Fourth of July, Memorial Day. Um, if they want to give up a holiday, like swap one, we can get rid of Columbus Day, like today, and um, implement yep. Juneteenth, because I think it's way more important and has more value than Christopher Columbus, who discovered, look, cross-eyed, all up and down America. America. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, so if there's any petitions out there to sign, um, I'm willing to sign them. I'll start one. I actually did start one on, um, I forgot the name of the website, like free petition or something. Dot com change dot change dot com. I'm all fucked up. I'm like free petitions, but yeah, change.org. Um, uh -huh. I think that it should be a national holiday. That's just my thought, my opinion. Yeah, yeah. no question about it. There's no there's no excuse not not for it to be. Right. You know what I mean, but that's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. So, so are you have you do you have plans for the fourth of July? Are you celebrating that or not? Oh yeah, I'm off. Okay. That's how I'm celebrating. Shit. Thanks for the day off. But, uh, what, what day is that? I'm sorry. I didn't... Exactly. <laughs> I know we have a, a three day weekend, but I don't know exactly why. But anyway. Right. But uh, yeah, I have a three day weekend as well. So that's going to be dope. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, um, I do see our special guest backstage, Lorraine Kamisha. And um, I'm actually in one of her uh, Facebook groups, Back to School Diva, and she has a few different things going on. So I wanted to bring her on. Well, all of us, not just me. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, all of us wanted to bring, you know, we like to have different guests come on and promote their businesses and, you know, support Black business. That's why, you know, that's one of our people, people here at Mel B. Seeing a Couple Joe. So we want everyone to welcome our guest. Hey, hey. hi, Lorraine. Hey guys, how are you doing today? Pretty good, good, and you? Good. I'm good. I'm good. Having a good Sunday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, being a Thanks part of the show. For, Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. I was just letting the viewers know that I'm actually in one of your groups that you have here on Facebook. Called uh, Back to School Diva. Can you tell everybody about that group? Yes, yes, uh, absolutely. So, Back to School Divas is a group that started in 2018, and it's for women who are going back to school. And I did a group specifically for women because, as a woman myself that went back to school, I threw a whole lot of different challenges that I faced while I was going back to school, and I didn't really have a lot of avenues to address those challenges. Uh, so, I wanted to create a group. Um, for women who are doing um, going through the same challenges um, so that we can like vent and talk to each other about them or even sometimes just get that, that extra push of motivation that we need that oftentimes we don't really get from our close circle because they just don't understand what we're going through. Right. right. That's what's up. So do you have a Super you, important. you keep track of the numbers like how many women you, you bring how, how many women have you brought on so far or have been pretty much part of that group? Uh, but right now, the group is uh, at about 3,500. Um, so in a couple of years, we've grown pretty, um, you know, pretty large. Um, so and it's still growing. So I'm really focusing on growing that group right now, um, like as especially because right now with the COVID-19 and all that good stuff going on, um, it's created a lot of new issues that even I didn't experience, um, you know, going back to school and you got kids that are homeschooled now and you got to work from home. And, you know, now uh, you go from you know, shaking her head like, oh boy, yeah, it's a myth. You know? <laughs> then you got to go from, you know, taking brick and mortar classes. And now you're forced to take online classes. Mm -hmm. And that can just be, you know, just disastrous, especially when you're taking some of those high level math and sciences and stuff like that. 
it can create a lot of stress. So, yeah, right. <laughs> Let me throw some holy water on you. Right. right. Bless her. It's, it's a big deal. And a lot of women are really struggling, um, you know, before COVID-19, but it's absolutely a struggle now. How do you think COVID-19 um, is going to affect education moving forward? Because a lot of people... Um, they may be like in a nursing program or wanting to be an architect. And dur during COVID-19, we kind of like noticed that um, essential jobs became the, um, the forefront. Right. So people that wanted to be like an architect or engineer, they were laid off during this time. So right. now they're starting to realize like being a cashier or even nursing, a doctor, EM EMT, those are the jobs that are kind of like, not saying that, you know, other jobs aren't essential, but these are like the jobs that no matter what goes down, you're always going to be in business. So yeah. how do you think that's going to affect um, your group one and two, just education overall? Well, I really hope that, you know, a lot of people have paid attention to what's going on during this time um, because, you know, everybody who goes to college is not necessarily going back to college with a plan. So uh, right now, like you said, there are jobs that are essential and there's jobs that are not so essential during these times. So I hopefully, you know, people are taking note and the women of my group are taking a look at this and saying, hey, maybe I should adjust my plan a little bit. So that I always have that job security. Honestly, I hope that more people are taking a look at how things are going and deciding that they want to strike up on their own or at least have some type of side income coming in. So that if something like this happens in the future, you know, it won't be such a disaster to their livelihoods, actually. Um, but as far as how um, education will change, I think we'll see a more shifts towards the um, virtual um, learning. And um, I think that's a very good thing, actually, because I know when I was going back to school, I ended up stopped going to class, really. I was in pharmacy school and I and it took me like three, four hours, you know, mm -hmm. just to get my kids ready, get them off to daycare, um, fight through ATL traffic, get to class, mm -hmm. like that's a four hour situation. So I was actually failing tests because I was not taking that same four hours to study. So when I stopped going to class, when I could actually, you know, just stopped attending and li listening to the uh, recorded, um, you know, uh, lessons, then I started making A's and B's on tests. So sometimes when we are, you know, adult students and we have, you know, other obstacles and other responsibilities and obligations, that ends up putting us like at an unfair advantage. Like I used to say, I can't afford to get A's. Like I know I'm smart enough to in undergrad when I didn't have any kids, I wasn't married, I wasn't you know, running a business, I wasn't doing all these things. I was an a star role student. Now all of a sudden I'm struggling to pass. So hopefully um, with this COVID-19 situation that um, universities will stop, start offering and pour more resources into the online learning um, environment. Yeah. And you, you mentioned um, that you were an entrepreneur. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about what you do? Sure. Um, and I'm definitely um, giving, getting ready to give a class on this next week, next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But what I do is the system called services arbitrage. So it's where you take the services of others and you advertise and and um, promote that as a business. So let's say I have a plumbing company and I notice that they're struggling with getting clients. Then what I do is I make myself the middleman and get the clients and then pay the plumber. That oh, that's sense. impressive. Yeah. So I'm a middleman. <laughs> I've been a bunch of different businesses. <laughs> Very important middleman. Very so important the, cla middleman. The, classes, the class that you have coming up, what is that? Um, I, I saw it because I'm a friend on Facebook. So I see a lot of the things that you post. But right. you do, you mentioned that you have a class coming up. What is the class on? Yes, it's called 40K in 30 Days. So during the COVID-19 situation, a lot of businesses were, you know, not doing so well. And they were having trouble finding clients. However, my business actually took a turn for the better. And we were able to do in the month of June, $40,000 in 30 days. Um, Go, girl. Girl. So I, have a team. I, need, I need to sign up for this class. <laughs> I have a team of uh, people, of course, so it's not just all me, but um, um, it just, you know, it's a truly a blessing to be able to, you know, to be afloat and to be prospering during this time. Um, so I definitely wanted to give that information out to um, those who are following me and those who are looking for other options during this time. 
Right. So, so let me ask you this. So what's your what's your what's the future plan for your group? Like do you are you plan do you have something in place like if let's say somebody in the group need to help with books or something like that? And you know, do you like spurt money out for that situation or whatever the case may be, or is that something well, yes. Well, we are coming out with a tutoring service in the fall. Um, so I'm going to be launching a contest um, at the beginning of August, which is going to give away a free uh, semester of math tutoring. Um, so that's that's one of the things that we're going to be doing. And then hopefully next year we'll be able to start getting our like nonprofit um, stuff in order. I'm working on that. That's not something that I am you know well knowledgeable about right now, but I'm working with another team to um, take care of that for me um, so that we can start giving away scholarships and providing some programs for like, like child care and stuff like that um, because that's a big need. In this yeah. Yeah. It all the time. That's right. So I enjoy um, hanging with the ladies and you know it, it takes me back to some of the struggles. Hey, I'm sorry. Oh, no, you said ladies, and I said and fella. But go ahead. Oh, no, I'm going to talk about the group. Oh, oh, I'm like, oh. <laughs> I see you. Don't forget about Joe over there. Keep drinking. <laughs> <Keep on there. laughs> but yeah, that's what's up. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, uh, that's a that's a very um, I think that's a very uh, um, great concept. You know, to have a support group like that. Because definitely, I know there's plenty of women out here that are in need of that support and that extra push. And they feel like they're doing it alone, and um, you know, I guess I think that's pretty awesome. And then all the things that you put forward, you know, forth and forward, and trying to make it better and bringing on more people. I think that, you know, it takes a village. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, especially when it comes down to you know how our people are, we always putting each other down. Trying to uh, you know get over on each other, so this is definitely one of the things that's that's needed in the community. You know what I'm saying? And I will say I've been a member of this group um, for I'm not sure how long. I want to say a year or so. Mm -hmm. And um, I can say that the the women there are super supportive. As yeah. far as like if someone says, oh, you know, it's certain things that we post on our regular social media that may come across as annoying like oh i got an a in all of my classes and everybody's friends and family looking like oh what get a's right. but it's yeah. good to have a place where you can go where it's going to be like a thousand people saying go girl congratulations and you know yeah. or i got a c yeah. and i failed the class don't worry i don't look at math too i think last week um I, I actually posted something that I needed help with. And so many people, even you, Lorraine, came to the rescue because I didn't know the first thing about what I need to do for this assignment. So I think I, I would encourage people to join that are even if even if you're not in school and you're thinking about going to school, being around like minds, I feel like it's super important when you're trying to achieve any goal. Right, right. And we have women there that are from all parts of their back to school journey. We have some women that are thinking about going to school and not sure what they want to major in. We have women who have, you know, been going to school for the last five or six years and they still haven't graduated because they've got stuff going on with family and, and all that good stuff. And we have women who are graduated and thinking about going back. So, you know, what, it doesn't matter what part of the journey you're on. We're there to support you because we've all been there at some point of time or another. Right. Absolutely. So let our viewers know um, where how they can get in contact with you and um, join the group. Email, join your group. Yeah, and join that class. class that you have coming up. Right, so, right. So the group you can find us on Facebook at Back to School Divas. Uh, we have a fan page and also a group. So if you just uh, request to join and fill out the information, then we'll be seeing you there shortly. And then as far as the um, class. You can find me on Facebook. So you can look up Lorraine Kamisha or you can do facebook.com um, forward slash Dr. Lorraine Kamisha, um, abbreviate DR Lorraine Kamisha. And um, you'll see plenty of posts <laughs> for that class. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be about 50 people. I'm going to be breaking down exactly how to start a business from scratch and then give you some ideas of some businesses that you can actually start. And a lot of these businesses take no capital at all. It's as simple as connecting a seller with a buyer and then scaling from there. Mm -hmm. uh, appreciate it.
so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We appreciate you and all that you're doing. Have a good one. <laughs> you too. Bye. Bye bye. That was so dope. I love anything about education. I think it's super important, especially um, for the black community, educating each other, educating our children, and just sharing stuff like that is important. Like you said, Mel, before, sometimes we need to be in a community of people of like minds to like move forward. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, especially if you come from certain backgrounds where education might not be something that they feel is important, but you do. Um, so having groups like that will definitely give you that support. So I suggest anybody out there to definitely follow and, you know, pick out what you need to go on your journey, continue your journey or start it. And I think um, groups like that are good because a lot of, especially mm -hmm. after 30, Mm -hmm. You know, we all have this pressure of having to be someone or be in a career. And we, we tend to second guess ourselves like, oh, I'm too old to do blah, blah, blah. I might not be able to do this, blah, blah, blah. But being in a group like that with so many women, you see posts with women in their 50s saying, oh, I want to go to school to be a lawyer. Do you think I'm too old? And everybody's like, no, girl, go yeah. for it. You know, yep. and just to see that support is good because even though we might ignore that from our own friends and family, mm -hmm. <laughs> they just telling me what I want to hear. You know, it's good to know that there's, you know, hope after 30. There's hope after 30, y'all. <laughs> 40, like, 50, 60, whatever. I was in nursing class with people that were like in their fifties and you know, so it's never too late to educate. That's my new slogan. Never too late to educate. All right. Yeah, he heard it here first on Mel BC in a couple of jokes. All right. All right, Brandy Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. So let's get into today's topic, guys. We know yes. our viewers are waiting and we'll have some new ones coming in. Yeah. Um, B, what's today's topic? So today we're going to talk about cancel culture. Canceled, as in canceled, X out, done, shutting your shit down. Canceled culture. Um, how did it originate? Where did it come from? Is, and is it ruining Black culture? Um, I want to say that cancel culture, to me, what I, rec what I feel like it's doing and what it is, um, is definitely coming from Black people. Um, we have a long history of being oppressed, victimized. We know the history. It's not a great history. Um, so this cancel culture thing came up um, when a black person or a person of color is being racially profiled, whether they're shopping in a store, trying to get an apartment. Um, anyway, they're being stereotyped because of their color. And... So they take to media, social media, and they try to have that business or that person canceled, whether it's lose their job, the business is shut down, um, the people have to leave their apartment complex, whatever it is, that's cancel culture. Um, so, you know me, I'm very fair, I'm very 50-50, I see both yeah. sides. So in the beginning, I saw a couple of stories where, you know, people were, you know, at a restaurant, a black couples at a restaurant, they are being served by a waiter and they may have been treated terrible because of their color. Fine. People take to social media, that waiter or that restaurant gets shut down. But now I'm noticing a trend that no matter what you do or what you say to a black person, they will find any reason to cancel you. So um, it's just amazing how things just get out of hand. So yeah, over the spiral, weekend, spiral. Yeah, spiral out of control. So over the yeah. over the weekend, there was um, a story, and I'm gonna pull it up, of a young black guy who I guess got flipped off. Oh, yes. He was driving, yeah, and um, I didn't mean to make that that big. Sorry, y'all. He was driving and he got flipped off by this white woman and he um proceeded to follow her. Can y'all see this? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, sorry. Yeah, she got close out that, that porn hub thing. Sorry, y'all. Yeah. 
Sorry, it has to cancel that. I think I did that correctly. But yeah, so let me try it again. Um, yeah, so she, uh, she, uh, she, uh, she, uh, she, uh, she, uh, so the guy was driving, she flipped him off, he didn't like it, he followed the lady, and he proceeded to antagonize her by filming her and stating, calling her Karen, which I think is another derogatory term. That's like calling a black person a nigga. Yeah, I don't like it. Oh, well, my opinion. Um, calls her Karen and was like, why'd you flip me off? And she's screaming, very erratic. She was definitely over the top. However, you know, he was wrong. He was in the wrong. And he took to social media to get her canceled. For what? Because she flipped him off? I flip people off all the time. I yell shit out my window all the time at bad drivers. That does not equal me being canceled or fired. Mo, Mo said you got to get the porn hub off the, um, off the laptop. I can see it. I know, y'all. I'm sorry. That shit is unlimited. No. Um, listen. So, yeah. So I feel like that we're taking it to a whole nother level because when there's things that, or people that need to be canceled, people are not going to take it seriously because you're canceling everybody for anything. Everything is not a black and white issue. Not every white person is racist. And it's just making us as people look so weak and just, y'all calling people Karen, talking about they snitches, you snitching. You snitching on a whole business over, you know, someone treating you a certain way. And I feel like it's just ridiculous and it's out of control. So I'm going to sit here and try to pull up this uh, thing. I'm going to jig one more time. I deleted the Pornhub mail. So <laughs> again. Um, what do you think? Can we talk? Can we talk about what we think? Go ahead. Huh? Y'all can talk. <laughs> John, what do you think about what B said? Oh, well, you know, for the most part, I, you know, I think it's going to be rare. It's going to be rare cases for anything. Where you're gonna have a situation where somebody's gonna try to take advantage, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think it's gonna be far in, in, in between. I know it's starting to happen in a lot more because of the, the you know the social environment we in are in more, or we say we in more <laughs> the social environment that we in currently. But I think for the most part, I, I in my view, I think it's I think it's a positive thing because you gotta as a as a culture, when do you start holding people accountable for just saying whatever they want to say about us? And then, or doing whatever they want to do to us, and not be held responsible because we can look at it at decades or periods where that hurts our reputation as black people. You know what I'm saying? So if anybody can make up anything about us and be like, "Oh, well, they're intimidating, they're disrespectful," and when they put that stuff out there, it becomes truth. You know that that kind of hurts our image. So. I think, in a sense, holding people responsible and letting them know, hey, you just can't, you know, we're people too. We're part of this, this culture, this, this in culture, this country, and everything too. So you can't just treat us, you know, treat us special. Or if you talk to us in any kind of way, we deserve the same respect you give to somebody else. You know what I'm saying? And I think, since being a, in, in a, a cancel culture, where you know, like I said, with with the right mindset and the you know the right intentions i think that's that's a great power to have what cancel culture cancel yeah. people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you think yeah. that's a great power for us to have to cancel just walk around like you cancel you cancel you cancel <laughs> because it, it's i mean what? i mean like i said it's just in a, in a right situation that, i mean like i said it's, it, it, it goes for any any culture you know what i'm saying you're gonna always have people that think that they could just say or do whatever they want against us. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, our reputation is on the line as well. Reputation is everything when mm -hmm. it comes to the culture. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, for people that we feel like is abusing like that situation right there, I saw that video. I was like, that's ridiculous because he had flipped off all, all the time just for driving. You know what I'm saying? And you know, if you you wouldn't do that to another black person. So it, obviously it was targeted, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I, it was definitely extra, but I think for us, we have the we have the opportunity to point those people out that's abusing that power versus just not saying nothing at all, about it at all. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Mel. <laughs> you know, I got something to say. <laughs> First, I want to address the Karen thing. It is not, absolutely not. 
thing as the N word. Mm. Karen is an actual name, you know, given to someone at birth that was turned into a slur, quote unquote, if that's what people are calling it now. It's not, it's not even technically a slur. It's a name like you would call um hate to say Joe, but any old Joe Schmo, you know, um uh, Bob the Builder, like people use names all the time to kind of like give people an idea of a certain behavior, you know. But I will say that um, away from that, I feel like uh, cancel culture is not only for white people. We cancel our own people all the time. Like there's a, um, a social media person, Be Simone. I don't know if you guys heard of her. She was canceled not once but twice, like in the last month. Mm -hmm. First, she was canceled because. Um, she was on a podcast talking about how she doesn't date. Um, I don't know if it was a podcast. Yeah, it was Nick Cannon, I, I believe. She was on his show and she talked about why she doesn't date nine to five men. She can't date them because they can't understand her hustle as far as being an entrepreneur and not having a set schedule. She works at like three o'clock in the morning. Everybody came for her. Saying, oh, how you going downplay men that work nine to five, blah, blah, blah. But my thing is, that's her preference. Yeah. You so what? Like, that's like me saying, you know, that's like somebody saying they don't like to date short guys. Or Joe, he always talking about girls with big butts and stuff like that. Like, we going to cancel him because of that? Like, that's his personal preference, you know? Then she got canceled again recently because she said something um, in 2017 about trannies or transvestites. Uh, it was something, they were on a podcast again, mm -hmm. and they were talking about how in Atlanta, you can't really use social media because, mm -hmm. well, she said, you can't, if you swipe up, you might see a tranny. That, those are her words, not mine. But then she was going to say, you know, she has um, friends that are in the LGBT community, blah, blah, blah. But I will say that um, cancel culture, I want to agree with Joe and say that it does have its benefits. But I also agree with B saying, like, you know, sometimes it goes a little bit too far because, you know, we're like she said, we're you, we can't just walk around and say you're canceled, you're canceled, you're canceled, like and banish them from the kingdom. <laughs> like, where do all the bit? Where do all the canceled people go? They're exactly. gonna be frontal, They're gonna be mad at the world. And anybody that comes into their, you know, immediate yeah. circle or area is gonna feel the wrath of their being canceled. Right. So it's always a downside to something, you know? And I, I think the biggest thing real quick is that um, I think people don't know the difference between having an opinion and actually hurting somebody, you know what I'm saying? Because when you have an opinion, you're entitled to have your opinion. But if you have ill intentions, like situations where a cancel, situ a cancel culture situation happened where it was justified, then you have to know the difference between an opinion and Somebody be malicious, you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, where it, and, and in the case where you're just gonna be like, all right, I'm gonna enact this, and this is what it is, and you're gonna you know, bring it out. So, but go ahead, uh, B. No, you're absolutely right. But I wanted to go back. Mel Salma says something about freedom of speech and um, people calling you whatever it is a nigga, a cracker, whatever it is, a Karen, a Joe, a Schmo. Technically, it's freedom of speech. Um, this whole new thing came out about where you couldn't call a gay person. I'm sorry if I'm being politically incorrect, but whatever. Um, you can't call a gay person a faggot. You can't call uh, uh, you know, a transsexual tranny. You can't say anything. Everybody is hypersensitive. And that's the big problem. You have comedians that are being canceled because they're using their platform as a comedian and they, they find these things funny these politically incorrect jokes, they find them funny and they're being canceled because they can't be funny. They can't say things that are quote unquote offensive. Um, like you said, 
go back to the word Karen and nigger. Um, damn, I use that ER. That shit really <laughs> hurt my chest. You now. Felt that in your soul. Oh, shit, my chest is beating. Hold on, let me re let me. Put that, you put that R in it. I put that ER. Put that hard ER on that bitch. But um. No, I think it's, no, it's not the same. Okay, we know Karen's a name that they gave at birth. However, at the end of the day, we call each other nigga all day. We do it. But as soon as a white person says it, it's like, what did you say? Oh, you must mean that in a derogatory way. No, they don't. Some of them don't. They mean it just the same way we mean it. But because it's coming from a different race of person, it automatically becomes a racial problem. So that word Karen to me now, because you put the, you already put the negative spin on it. If you're a Karen, it's like you are a racist white woman, right? Nigga means ignorant person. So if you act in ignorant in the street and someone white calls you that word, you can't get mad, right? Because the definition means ignorant or can you get mad? So, exactly, so what I mean, what, what this all boils down to, I'm not saying we should be calling each other names at all. Especially the word nigga, especially the word cracker, like um, Ishmael said in, in the comments. I think all those words should be, those words should be canceled. But the behaviors behind it, the intent behind it should also be canceled. The hypersensitivity from the blacks, the gays, the straights, and everybody needs to be canceled. Because that's the problem. At the end of the day, it's freedom of speech. You cut me off, it's going to be fuck you. If you want to follow me back to my house and put a camera in my face and I have the right to bear arms and I feel threatened and you get shot, then that's on you too. You know, so we all we all have to like kind of reel ourselves back and to remember that we're all humans and everybody has freedom of speech and everybody has the right to say what they want. If you don't like it, it's up to you to control that situation. You have to get some therapy and some help if you if you want to cancel somebody because they flipped you the, the bird. It's ridiculous to me. And this is but I, think, like, go ahead now. I think that. um People are getting canceled way for way more important reasons and issues other than, you know, calling the cops on somebody because, you know, you walk in your dog without a leash. Okay, like, but before you continue, I'm sorry. This is really quick. We had an incident. Black girl goes to, um, where was she? Waffle House. Um, the lady was being an asshole. She was trying to charge her for utensils. The girl didn't want to pay for the utensils. The lady at the Waffle House called the cops on her, got her arrested. The cops came in, they violated the girl. Stripped her naked, embarrassed. She got locked up, whatever. What did black people do? They wanted to cancel Waffle House. Not that Waffle House, but all Waffle Houses. So now you're going to cancel all Waffle Houses because that particular Waffle House had one incident with one person. That to me makes no sense because now you're canceling all those Waffle Houses. Those Waffle Houses employ Black people. They employ people that are coming out of prison, like feds and stuff like coming out of the feds. Parolees, they employ people. So why cancel a whole chain when you just should cancel that one particular Waffle House or just that one particular employee. That's where I don't get. Like they're saying, oh, shut down all the um place because they should put I'm Brandy not letting nobody talk today. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the time. I'm only two minutes and like, no, no, no. Like, I'm actually looking at the time. But what I'm saying is that when you cancel a whole entire chain of people, you have to remember who it affects. It you know it affects people of color a lot of times. Well, go ahead, um, Melissa and Joe. I'm sorry. Let me take my little. Story. I'm gonna let Joe talk because uh -oh. he, was like he was itching to say something. Oh, so uh, I, I definitely was um, referring to that. Listen, as you pointed out, um, I think for the most part, when they say we, uh, we need to cancel all, we need to cancel all the Waffle House. I think that pretty much sends a message to Waffle House, like, hey, you need to change your policy, versus it being like actually closing it, the whole chain now. You know what I'm saying? So when you if, if you just say if you make it just particular for that store, then it's not solving any potential issues with Waffle House uh, line of training. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they need to re-educate and retrain their employees on how to handle certain situations. So I think when they when people apply like litter don't literally mean we need to boycott the whole thing. I mean they can literally mean that, but not literally close everything down. I think it's just too important. You know, what I'm saying it, it poses change amongst the, the group in the in the in the, in the in that, in that system. Like, hey, we coming for you. We recognize there's an issue. So, what you're gonna do about it? Because now we coming for you. Because now we're talking about you know we're gonna stop spending our money there. You know what I'm saying? So, I 
think, you know, definitely they got to something, you know, something's definitely got to be said all across the board so the whole company can feel it and not just a particular isolated incident. That's it. So, go ahead, Mal. What I was going to say was sometimes people need to get canceled. But before I get to that point, I'm going to say what I don't like about cancel culture is the fact that, you know, people are digging up stuff from people that are famous from like three years ago, five years ago. You know, you become famous or anybody, even us, like when this podcast blow up, because it is, right? Okay. When it when it blow up, Get my good side. Get my people good side. might feel, you know, and you know, want to dig into our past and find out what, what we said back in the day, 10 years ago, whatever. And I feel like that's the problem with cancel culture because people evolve, people change. You know, my thoughts today may not be the same. I might not feel the same way 10 years from now or even tomorrow. When mm -hmm. I watch this back, I might be like, why did I say that? You yeah. know, um, but I feel like sometimes people need to be canceled by R. Kelly. You know, um, how long have black people like gave him a pass on things that he was doing? You know, and it took a, a movement. It took people who you know, coming together and canceling him for people to for him to even be prosecuted, for him to even be brought up on charges that he and you know, and they found so much stuff. Bill Cosby, you know, um Jeffrey Epstein. I just watched a whole documentary on him and he's been doing this stuff for cancel culture. None of his colleagues or his community or people in his circle cancel him at all. Like it took years and years and years, and sometimes you know, or because I love me some R. Kelly too, Mel. But go ahead, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just sorry. saying, no, we're not gonna leave Robert out of this because he leave Robert alone. I mean, in, in our defense, like when he was on his dirty old man stuff, like we was like it was up to the people that was, you know, in a that's our age right now to say, y'all don't need to be listening to our family. He's a rapist. You know, nobody now it's too late. Every he done became a part of everybody lie. Everybody done sung his song at their graduation. Mm -hmm. you know? I believe I can fly. But <laughs> but I feel yeah. like cancel culture is it might be annoying because people, there's no limit, there's no boundaries on cancel culture. Like you could literally get canceled for anything, right? You know, um, and that's the problem. And that's the problem. But at the same time, you know, you can't take the, the bad without the good. You can't take the good without the bad. So in some ways, it's necessary. In other ways, it's uncalled for. Right. I just want to go back to a point that Joe, real quick, that you made. You said that all the Waffle Houses should be retrained because of that one incident. So let's say on your job, hold on, let's say on your job, you work for Cablevision or whatever. Mm -hmm. And one guy on your job in Minnesota is a cokehead or a thief. He starts stealing stuff from the company or went to a, a client's house and stole something. Mm -hmm. Now, should all of you guys be canceled and they should they close all the... Um, all the optimums or cable visions down because of that one incident with that one person that stole that one item, or should that one person be held accountable? Well, I mean, the one person is definitely going to be held accountable, but it's going to also bring the I bring it to the attention of the company. We're like, okay, you know, really, really bet who you're hiring, so we can prevent this from further happening because it's so disparaging to our customers. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think that's how they would look at it. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you, if you, especially if it's a situation like that where it's that extreme and it's gonna and it causes somebody to get hurt or it's causes somebody, you know, it's yeah, it should be brought to their attention. Okay, we need to re re look at our hiring practices and are we really going through this thoroughly and we hiring the right people? Hold on, not to interrupt you. I'm not talking about a training. I said close. They wanted Waffle House closed down. They wanted to yeah. shut all Waffle Houses down. Yeah. That's yeah, different can. from training and saying, you know, doing an yeah. ethic training or OSHA, HIPAA, whatever. No, this is a whole different situation. <laughs> You're trying to get rid of a whole entire chain. Well, yeah, company. Yeah, I think that's not, I think for the most part, that's the term that that's a term that's being used because realistically, we're not going to make a being a company um, shut down 
because you said so. You know, we so, are though. Yeah. Have you been not watching what's been going on? People have been. I say some of them statues need to come down, but they're ripping statues down. They're getting businesses closed down. People are losing their jobs. People are losing a lot of stuff. It's yeah. It could yeah. be oh well, but when it starts to affect us as a people, and I'm a, I'm gonna tell you how. A lot of these companies hire black people. People, black people, unfortunately, we have not gotten to that position of power where we're hiring. A bunch of people, millions of people. Well, we need to give we us the push. To, okay, so now we're going to cancel everybody. Let's cancel everybody. Where do we begin? Who's going to hire us tomorrow? Say we cancel the big hospitals or the big corporations that's hiring a lot of us. I'm not saying they don't need to be canceled. Some of them do. But if we keep this trend going, right? Because I tried. I said, let me buy, let's try to buy black for one day, 24 hours. I'm talking about everything black. I mean, you're down to the bricks that are laid on your building, down to the paint on your walls. You go out there and you try to do that before you cancel everybody or vice versa. Let's cancel everybody and then try to stick just being black and let's see how far we get in this world. So before we put the, how they say it, the horse before the carriage or the carriage before the horse, however, let's step back sometimes and say, you know what? We are in a position of power. They are listening to us. Let's use this platform in a positive way to get us somewhere where we can move on and actually do something for our community instead of just canceling everybody because I didn't like maybe the way you said that. Maybe, maybe that's the only way we're going to be able to rise up. If we we got to cancel everybody, we got to cancel out the competition. Well, you know and what start from with what? It's well, a lot of people do it. It's black doctors, it's black lawyers, it's black plumbers, it's black architects, it's mm -hmm. a lot. Is there a black water company? Is there a black, <laughs> black electrical, electrical company? I'm being serious. Cause I looked this stuff up. There's not a black oil company. There's not a black like the necessities, the essentials that that's we need. True, that's true. No, that's no. I looked it up. I really looked it up. I but really was I'm looking it up. Is, what I'm saying is that it's a lot of things that are on the rise, and I don't really feel like just because me and you and Joe might say, you know what, I'm not watching cable no more. It's canceled. Mm -hmm. That don't mean that everybody that's watching us is gonna cancel it. That doesn't mean that they're gonna lose. Black people are the minority. It's still going to be people that support in that business. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really feel like it's that extreme to where, you know, we cancel something and then now we got to fend for ourselves, you know, because it's always going to be the coons or whatever you want to call it. It's always going to be people that's not with the mo a particular movement, you know, mm -hmm. but I, I will say that the fact that people are taking initiative to say, I'm not going to use certain products anymore unless it's black owned is mm -hmm. what we need to do in order to push people to open up more businesses, to become mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, to say, you know what, there's a market in this. People are not buying as much stuff from such and such company. Let me open up my own mm -hmm. so that people will come to me. It's almost like a, a global awakening. That's happening right now. And I feel like, yes, there are downsides to cancel culture, but we can't fight the process. Like everything, you know, everything was written already. Like I'd like to believe that, you know, we're in the present, but the future is already done. So we don't really know what is happening to move in the direction that we need to go. You know, everybody needs to have, you know, of course, being an individual and make decisions based on what they feel like is right for their lives. But people need to get with the program and start building and start, you know, creating opportunities for ourselves so that we, we won't have to depend on these companies to cancel. We right. won't have to, you know, we won't have to depend on, you know, going to a place where we're gonna be discriminated against. Right. And then, what were you gonna and, say, John? Oh, um, and then, you know, we can also support other groups that have more of our agenda in mind. That's how we form some, you know, form a power for us. You know what I'm saying? So if one group doesn't do it, it's, there's always another option. It don't necessarily have to be black. We would love for it to be black, but if it's not, we could. If you have, if you come down to gas company, light companies, okay, you could you have options. So if somebody fits more of the agenda and is willing to take care of you and take care of the culture and understand, okay. We have respect for what you what you believe in, and that's cool. Mm -hmm. I haven't I have yet to see a billion dollar company get shut down because black people said shut it down. Like you right. know, what I mean? I've I've only seen individuals be affected by it, by the mm -hmm. cancer culture, 
and I'm only that's pretty much that to the most the biggest extent. I, you know, when we was boycotting Gucci when they came out with that crazy ass clothing line. Mm -hmm. yeah, or H&M or H&M yeah. just with H&M yeah, and then, alone how people want us to cancel H&M yeah. yeah. and then and and like, what they mm -hmm. left about a month and T.I. and you know, all them came out and was like mm -hmm. yo stop, 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 stop spending your money with it and what Floyd Mayweather do I'm going to Gucci you know right. Like, so that just kind of proves my point that it's just like a bunch of fluff. It's a bunch yeah. of stomping of the feet. Oh, you're canceled because blah, 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 blah. Like I said, there's some cases people need to be canceled, like Starbucks, for an instance, when oh, those, yeah, that, right. they call the cops on those black guys. That was unnecessary. Um, they did a retrain. So like you also said that it's never going to be like a, a fully official cancel right. because we don't have that much power. But this is what I this is what I observe. The more you cancel, the more you every little thing you do is making us look somewhat handicapped. And I mentioned that before with the whole writing Black Lives Matter and yellow paint that you can see from fucking space. What does that do for us as people? It's the same thing. No offense to anybody that's handicapped. Please don't take this the wrong way. But it's the same thing as putting a handicap sticker on your damn license plate. Um, something is wrong with me. I need to show everybody something is wrong with me because I have this sticker, this 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 mark on me. Black Lives Matter. You know what does Black Lives Matter mean today to me? When I hear that, I think our lives matter, but I also think cancel culture. I also think of a lot of other things that might not be pushing us forward. And I want to see us be moved forward. I want to see those big companies and corporations and those. Black Wall Street, I wanna see all of those things rise from this. I don't wanna be stuck in this little game of rip this statue down, get this Karen gone, cancel her because she looked at me funny. I don't wanna be in that. I wanna you don't have forward. You don't have to be in it. It's like, it's all in your mind. But hold on, before, no, it's not, it's not. And I'm gonna tell you how I know. Since this has started, I've went to Starbucks plenty of times. Plenty of times, thousands of times since this started, I have gotten two free gift cards just for asking two simple questions. You were on the phone with me the other day, but never before though. So I feel like it's like a sensitive thing when they see me. Oh my God, good morning. How are you? Do you need an extra straw? Like they're being extra nice. And I don't, oh, I don't feel like, it. No, but I don't want like that. What do you mean? It's phony. It's not authentic. It's not authentic. It's not real. It's a phony thing. And it's because, hold on, it's because of the whole, there's something wrong with black people. They are sensitive because of what happened to them in the future. So I'm going to be extra nice to them. I don't want nobody treating me like that. That's like being in a relationship with somebody and he's only treating you good for because you're handicapped or something is wrong with you. So he treats you nice and he's being nice to you, but deep down inside, he really doesn't give a fuck. I'd rather you be a racist in my face than fake racist behind my back. I'm sorry, but that's just I, me. I feel like that that comment right there is like, you damned if you do and you damned if you don't. Because no. the whole Black Lives Matter no. movement is because we don't like how we being treated. But then when we get treated better, it's like, no, not like that. I don't want to be treated good. Like no, no, I'm saying that. Like, I, I don't want to be. I don't want to be labeled as a victim. I don't want to be looked at not, as a victim. Or I don't want to be looked at like I'm hypersensitive that you can't talk to me like a regular person. I don't want comedians to stop I'm doing black jokes. As far that's, as it's not all in your mind, because for me, if somebody is treating me well and giving me gift cards and stuff like that, I'm gonna take it. Just like if I go to a school and they give, they want to give me a scholarship, a full free ride because I'm black. Thank you very much because my ancestors paved the way. They suffered. So if now, if I'm going to reap, if this is the most reward that I can reap is you treating me nice and you giving me a gift card and you giving me a $100,000 scholarship to yeah. school, thank you very much because I'm guess good. what? That's going to give me the ability to now treat my children better and to maybe um, treat somebody else better because I was treated nice that day. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like, you know, as black people, we have to choose what we want. Do we want to be treated well or do we want to be treated like we ain't shit? You know what I'm saying? Or are we treated? Do you feel you like you're treated know, like you ain't shit? You don't know if something you can't accuse somebody of being in genuine, but just because you feeling like it's fake. That don't mean that it's fake. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I feel like it's all that it's all levels. Like and the, regarding like where we came from to where we are now, when people are giving us respect, 
even if they feel like they have to, then so be it because we deserve it. We people, we just like any other race. There's nothing different about us other than the color of our skin. And we shouldn't have to be fighting in the street and freaking um, protesting to be treated like a human. You know right. what I'm saying? We've been doing for years. And that's what I said oh, a couple of weeks ago. We've been protesting and fighting for years for a group of people to treat us like human beings. Why do we have to freaking beg people to love us? We shouldn't have to do that. That's my whole point. We should not have to do us. that. No. Well, treat us like human beings or treat us with respect that we, we're lacking respect and whatever. We're, we're pretty much marching and protesting for that now in 2020. 2020, we had to really do that to open up people's eyes is a problem. And I'm not saying it's a problem on our end. It's a problem on their end. So why the hell, just like the Oscars, black people, actors, oh, we never win Oscars. Make your own damn award ceremony. Why are you begging for their Oscars? Well, we do. We we their do Oscars. Oscars. I know that. I know we do. But guess what? You're still crying for an Oscar, though. That's my whole point. If they don't want you, why are you banging down their door? Let's make our own doors. Let's make our own communities. Mel Tom, I think he posted in um, our group that we have, um, Urban, um, I'm I'm sorry, Urban Universe. He posted in the group. There's a there's a little town in Georgia that costs like a hundred one point four million or whatever to own. That is where I want to see our money go. I want to see us since we're all serious and we're all like, okay, let's go with this movement and we we're, we're on it. Where's the money at? Let's all put in the money. We got big celebrities that are billionaires. Where's the money at? Let's build up that community and start from scratch right then and there. That's not going to happen. What's going to happen is cancel culture. I'm going to cancel you because I don't have what you have. And that's it. You cancel them and then that's it. There's no, where's the plan after you cancel them? There's no can plan. All right. So now you're canceled. Hold on. I'm going to scream Black Lives Matter. Care for me. Love me. Protect me. Um, Respect me. Now I got your respect, your love, and care. Where's the plan after that? There's still no plan. But I feel like the best way for us to get results is not worrying about what everybody else is doing. We have to start as individuals with our own movement, and that radiates within our circle. Right. If me, me, you, and Joe was to start a business right now, anybody that is in our media circles is going to be inspired to start their own business. That's how the chain of, you know, just cause and effect. Every time we sit there and we worry about what everybody else is doing, let's say somebody had a failed business. Oh, I'm not going to start my business because this person didn't, couldn't do it. What that got to do with me? You know, I feel like as a community, that is our worst problem. Worrying about what everybody else is doing and what results they haven't had. And therefore, we're not even going to try. You know what I'm saying? Um, what, let Joe talk because he's been trying to get out. <laughs> I know. I was trying to tell it's you. Only because I drink it. It's only because I ain't drinking right now. Oh, uh, <laughs> back. Hey, and I, I, I love Brandy, man. You, you also, I like how your approach is and your views, and you know, you're different. So it's not uh, a, a complete consensus all the time. So I appreciate you. Never with Brandy. Never a dull moment with Brandy. Uh, yeah, right. No question about it. <laughs> yes, in the house. <laughs> so going back to what you said about the, you know, what you know, how people are treating us, and you know, you feel like that it's fake and phony. I think it starts somewhere because if you if you look at it oh, from you know from the, uh, from a different angle, if it was somebody that was Caucasian and they, they get treated that way, then why should we deserve the same treatment? You know what I'm saying? Regardless of regardless of the fact. You know what I'm saying? If we if, if our if our if our main goal at the end of the day is to be treated human and be treated equally, because that's what we always ask for, equal treatment, then I, I don't see it as why it's nothing wrong with it. It's plenty of fake and phony people, but that's just not for me to go through the day and be like, Okay, you fake. Oh, that's genuine. Oh, that's fake. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I just I take it for what it with how it comes, you know what I'm saying? I don't feel like it's a handicap. I feel like by people playing painting that big old yellow symbol of Black Lives Matter is going to be a constant reminder to, you know, not to forget the cause. You know, because there's, there's some real changes getting made, especially down here in the South. Okay. The like what? Because like you're down South. Country. And I know I really want to know, like, do you yeah. feel like there's changes being made? Yeah, there are. And, and, and it starts with the Confederacy because these people, yeah. like I said, I run into people that were really, you know, I come to customers that be like, hey, before they say hello, it's not, 
hate is heritage. That's the first thing they tell me is a black person. So that tells me you're guilty of something. Like, I, I don't even care about. I'm just coming to do your cable. You know what I'm saying? You, it's, it's on your mind because you see me as a black person. You wouldn't right. say it to a white. You wouldn't say it to a white technician. You know what I'm saying? So it, it and then you know with these changes where it, where the changes are happening is <clears throat> when you say okay they tearing down these statues. Those things deserve to be in a museum. If you want to see them when you want to see them, is mm -hmm. then you can go to a museum just like you see. You want to see African art, you go to a museum. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it shouldn't be, but those statues are imposed in our society, and they be like, okay, this is that's that's a form of, of supremacy. Yeah, it's a reminder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so exactly. Mm -hmm. So remove it, keep make the playing field equal. If you want to see, mm -hmm. if you want to, if, if it's not, if, if it's about heritage for you and not hate, go see it in a museum. Ain't got to be on the street. Um, street name got ain't, ain't got to be Confederate Avenue. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. it, 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 it's, a, it's a cause and effect. Because I want to oh, know if, if if they put. Go ahead, Joe. No, yeah. I mean, Joe. <laughs> go ahead, Joe. Go ahead, Joe. Like all these school, all these colleges, they getting they getting these Confederate name changes. The military bases getting the name changes. This is this is this is a long time coming. Regardless of how how all right, we've been doing it for years and years and years. It's still a chip. It's still a chip away effect. It's still chipping away. Let me just throw a question out for both of y'all. How do y'all feel about the celebrities who are voiceovers for black characters who are stepping down after 20 years of caking? Now all of a sudden they want to step down like, oh, I don't feel like I should play the voice of, um, what's the black guy? Um, not family guy, the black guy. Oh, from uh, 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 Cleveland. Cleveland, Cleveland is a white guy that plays him. So he's stepping down because he feels like, you know, it should be a black character. That plays him. How do y'all like? How Good. do you feel about that? Good, because okay. that's equivalent to blackface, as far as I'm concerned. Why is white man doing a voice for a black person? They couldn't find a, a, a black person to do this man voice. I mean, that to me, that's like equivalent to blackface. Okay. How can you have a a a representation, an accurate representation of a black man if it's not played by a black man? That means that a cartoon is satire. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, How about you, Joe? As far as the the white voiceovers for black characters. Um, I mean, I I don't feel no kind of way about it either way. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think if you know you, everybody's entitled to their opinion. If he felt if he feels a certain kind of way about it, then that's you know, and it bothers him within his heart. Then that's you know that's something that he can um, make that make that choice on, and I don't think it I don't think it adds or I mean and I don't think it adds or contri or I don't think it de decreases or adds to the value of what black people are trying to do, but it, it helps in the sense that somebody's standing up and you know in their own sense in their own mind and feel like something's not right about it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, I think I think that um, a lot of stuff, the frustration that a lot of black people are feeling, like B mentioned, as far as like the cartoon and. For me, um, the syrup, the Aunt Shemima, they're taking her um, picture off because it's degrading. I Uncle feel like ben, all of that. this Black Lives Movement is detrimental in a sense that it's causing white people to focus on the wrong thing. Like, we don't care about syrup. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, when, I feel like those issues are kind of superficial and on the surface of exactly what it, we need police reform okay well, we need people to be held accountable for killing black people that are authority figures we don't well, need to, we don't need to people right. you know that should be the after effects of everything bigger we need just Brianna Taylor <laughs> okay we need right. just the the and that's where I have the problem with the cancel culture because once you start projecting and putting that as the forefront of the problem for black people as far as cancel this, cancel that, those things get swept under the rug, those big issues. They're like, well, we got rid of Aunt your mama. 
We gave you a street sign that says Malcolm X Boulevard. We gave you a Black Lives Matter. What more do you want from us? And that is the biggest problem, my people. We do not want anything from any other race. What we want is for us to become dominant and to take over and control our own shit. That is the that is what we need. We don't need Warner Brothers and the Rockefellers. I mean, shit, if we can get some of their money, yeah, that'd be nice. But we don't really need them. We have, we have them, exactly. You know who on my cash app? Dollar Shine, Brandon B. No, um, that's what we need to focus on, how to become those type of people. How do we, how do we get into that um, position of power? How do we get into that financial position? I think that we move very loudly. Everybody knows what we do. We, they can see it from a mile away. They're gonna march, they're gonna preach, they're gonna yell, they're gonna scream. I'm sorry, I'm loud. They're gonna march, no, they're gonna- No, we gotta move in silence. Oh, move in silence, yes. <laughs> move in silence, right. We gotta, we gotta move. <laughs> We got to move in silence. We don't have to let everybody know when we're coming. And that's and that's the biggest problem. If you say one racial thing, black people, what's the first thing we get, we get off on? Race. You do anything that looks racist, we going to oh lord, we're going to start marching, pull out the prayer cloths, and we're going to we're going we're going to get Reverend Al Sharpton and Jesse Jack. They know how. They know every move. This is a chess game. Be quiet. Let's pack up our money, get our shit together, uni unify as a people, stop dating outside of our race, our black men, bring your asses home, and let's build a family and a community and move away. I am all 100%, I know this is gonna sound racist, but segregation, not a racist, not a racial segregation where we don't like black, white people, but segregation, black people should have their own shit. We should have our own stuff because we just live different. We move differently. And I think that our lives might be a little bit better. But if we're going around canceling culture and canceling people because they called you a bad name, then you have a problem yourself. You're too goddamn sensitive. And that's my opinion about it. Up, yeah. as, I sip my white, as I sip my wine made by the white man <laughs> in the white man's glass because uh, ain't no brother. <laughs> I'm sorry. But if y'all know any black owned um, wine companies, please inbox me because I would love to support. I've been trying to change a lot of my ways and it's not to be racist. I just feel like we need to, we've been on this earth for billions of years. Oh, millions. I don't really know the amount. But we've been here a long ass time and we have not yet accomplished a lot of things that we need to accomplish. Our beauty, our smarts, our wit, our wisdom, our strength, we should be at the forefront and at the top of every company everywhere like that's just my opinion like shit and we gonna get there facts everybody i'm mean, sorry the know. statues need to go but we're gonna that? wrap it up y'all yeah, we're gonna wrap it up because we definitely had a good show today absolutely um, yes, and, and i love all my people no, and B is definitely this is her topic this week, guys. That's why we kind of like let her run with it. She could that's her thing. That's why yeah. me and Joe was over here like church mouses waiting to get a word. I can't wait to the playback. <laughs> yeah, you wanna see? No, don't watch it. Don't watch it tonight. Gonna, watch it tomorrow. Gonna, all right, I am. You gonna be am. like, damn, I really didn't like that too. Joe, you agreeing with Melissa? I'm looking at the time with all of my eyes. Of course, he agrees. With me. I know. Uh, <laughs> oh, hey, 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 Look. We can't no, even unify on the podcast. There's only three of us. We can't even get it together. Matter of fact, y'all canceled. No, I'm just joking. Yeah, I'm saying, you can't yeah. agree with you, B. I'm joking. I know. I love, I love the differences in opinions and thoughts. Believe me, I think the same way y'all think, but I just try to see both sides because I do work in a very, you know, I work with nothing but white people and I love y'all all. And I, like I said with the gift cards, when I tell them about my little gift cards, they're like, I never got a gift card. And they've been going to Starbucks for 20,000 years. So, I don't know. I look at things both ways. So whatever. Maybe it's just me. But them bitches don't never get gift cards. I get four types of free shit all the time. So maybe it's not. What's the problem? You always be calling me bragging, and it was way before all of this. It she was, was, but I noticed no, it now. Yo, me sitting there talking about I called and compl I called corporate and I complained. They sent me a whole new car. Mm -hmm. shout, out the, shout out! Look, shout out to the Apple AirPods. I got. <laughs> Oh, 399. Oh, that's fine. I'm not paying 
I'm not paying attention to her when she's sitting here talking about she got problems with gift cards. Like, I let her put over my head. But, yeah, so we want to leave our viewers with some positive affirmations for the week because we definitely need... Um, Kim, you already know. Wait, I got Because Kim is on here. Kim knows about all the free 99 stuff I get. Mm. Right. And, and she over here complaining, <laughs> right, Kim? I'm not, right? I'm not complaining. What I'm saying is, please, for all the companies out there that want to drop free stuff off to me, I'll give you my address. But I'm not complaining. What I'm saying is, don't give it to me because of the color of my skin. Or, and, you know, I just... Whatever. We're going we're gonna to wrap this up with some positive affirmations. Um, oh. Exactly, Mel. Like, that's what I said. It's all in her head. She be bugging, talking yeah. about it because I'm black. Um, all right. So, so for the week, who's going to start? Yo, since you ain't talked the whole podcast, you probably have about 30 seconds. Leave our viewers with some positive affirmations for the week. <laughs> Let's talk affirmation for the week is um <clears throat> shut up. <laughs> shut up and let a nigga talk. No, go ahead. Speak. <laughs> exactly. That's why y'all single. I never want to shut your goddamn mouth. All right. So positive affirmation for the week is um do what you feel is necessary to make you happy. Don't worry about what everybody else thinks. You at the end of the day, do you? If you really truly feel like you gotta do something and it's in your heart to do that, then do you. And at the end of the day, it's only you. You 100% responsible for your life only. And that's what that's Facts, 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 facts. That's the affirmation for the week. Del? My affirmation for the week is we are young, gifted, and black. And we need to run with that. We need to, <laughs> we need to run with that. We we, we, know, we really do. We we need to come together. I know it's not really an affirmation, but it's something that I hope to see in the near future. Um, us as brown people, we need to come together and really, really put the sensitivity to the side and focus on the issues that will move us forward. That's it. Well, my positive affirmation for the week is I want to learn how to trust my gut, trust my instinct, and focus on my personal future and where I see myself, where I see my family, you know, as far as prosperity is concerned, I'm thinking to elevate. I want to elevate my mind, elevate my existence, and That's all right. of those of the lives of the people that I love and I care about. <laughs> snap, snap. I like that. Mel wants to know what type of wine I'm drinking. I am drinking Gallo Sweet Grapefruit Rose. This and is my empty. wine. Look, it's empty. It's a small bottle. Look, I can't even get the shit focused. <laughs> I'm focused, man. Tell Nah, this is my shit. It's really good. Uh, all right. They ain't paying us. Right. Free, free you never know. Listen. All right. All right. <laughs> They ain't paying us yet. Exactly. Yeah. But thanks, guys. I had a wonderful time today. Me too. Um, thank, thank you, Lorraine. You. Yes. Thank, thank you, you um, Lorraine, our special guest. And thank you, B, for choosing this controversial topic for today. You know, it's me for the controversy. She was all fired up today, you know. Right. And Joe ready to go. So we got to go, y'all. Right. Thank you, Joe, for sticking in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crazy, yeah. Bye, y'all. Hey, See you Sunday. Everybody have a wonderful weekend. All right. I ain't doing that kissy face thing, though. <laughs> <laughs>